The first football game ever was played between Princeton and Rutgers in 1869. Little did these two groups of young men battling over a patch of New Jersey dirt know that nearly 150 years later, colleges and universities would build tremendous stadiums to house their football programs, some with more seating capacity than the cities they call home. And let's look at these structures man has built today, shall we? Critiquing the top 25 college football stadium secrets and traditions is coming up right after this. Before we get started, I'm no architect, no engineer, and there is criteria we need to cover. This is not a ranking. The stadiums are listed by seating capacity. Additionally, any stadium that splits time with a permanent NFL team, with the exception of the LA Coliseum, does not count. So Pitt and Temple fans, not so for you. During Coach Hayden Fry's tenure, the visiting locker room at Kinnick Stadium was painted pink, believing it as a color that would put other teams in a passive mood and cause them to sing show tunes, enhance their fashion sense, and engage in rampant homosexual activity. In 2005, there was an actual protest over the pink locker room because apparently a color is offensive. The locker room is still pink. In 2017, a children's hospital was opened within full view of the stadium, starting the awesome tradition of The Wave, where young patients and families give the crowd and players a boost, and vice versa. Seriously, that's awesome. One of the most distinct features of Faro Field is the giant M at the stadium's north end zone, which is an assembly of white rocks that was made from leftover stone in 1927. A tradition at Mizzou is for seniors to take a rock from the M in their final home game. Though apparently Maddie Mock was into a different type of rock. Home of the UAB Blazers, Slow Legion Field in Birmingham day. has also served as a temporary home for both the Auburn Tigers and the Crimson Tide, and those two teams have played each other at Legion over 40 times, the last time in 2000. An AFL game was played there in 1968 between the Patriots and the Jets. The Jets won 47-31 to behind a strong effort by Alabama native Joe Namath. I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. The primary site for Razorback home games, this venue splits time with War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. The gigantic 30 by 107 foot LED display at the north end zone is nicknamed the pig screen, which is what I would call any TV in Bobby Petrino's house. The atmosphere of this stadium has been heavily enhanced by the movie 300 as clips from the film are littered throughout the game day experience. Even Gerard Butler has gotten in on the act. Another MSU tradition is the announcement of the weather before the game and the declaration that it's a beautiful day for football. Lastly, there is Zeke the Wonder Dog, the frisbee catch and canine that has been wowing crowds for 30 years. When the current Zeke retires, there will be an open tryout. I don't think Devin Bush Jr. is auditioning here though. Built with a Paris style entrance reminiscent of Roman architecture, the Colosseum retains many features and remnants of the two Olympic games it has hosted, including the torch. Once with a seating capacity of over 100K, that has been reduced to accommodate a more intimate and realistic attendance experience for both Rams and Trojans games. Though listed as a temp home for the NFL, there are renovations that are on the table and some that are already underway. The Coliseum plans to bid on a third Olympics in 2028. Probably the best known feature of this stadium is Touchdown Jesus, a mural that was installed in 1964 on the campus library's wall facing the field because God cares about football. Opened in 1930, the structure was actually modeled after the big house in Michigan, but on a smaller scale. A long-standing tradition is the player walk, where the squad walks from the library to the stadium on game day morning. Manti's girlfriend did not attend.
A stadium that has an exterior similar to that of a university administrative building, the Doak has undergone many changes since 1950. The arena looks like a campus building from the outside because it houses many of the university's offices. No FSU game is complete without Chief Osceola Renegade putting a flaming spear in the field followed by a complete FSU choking. Home of the Cox. The east upper deck at Williams Bryce has a notable sway or bounce to it, causing the popular Joe Morrison quote, if it ain't swaying, we ain't playing. Engineers have deemed the sway safe, as most of the collapsing has happened on the field in Columbia. Did you expect me to take it easy on a team that comes out to sandstorm? The Wisconsin faithful love treating their stadium like a late 90s nightclub by doing their traditional jump around ritual. In 1993, the Camp Randall crush occurred after an upset win over the Wolverines when fans began to rush the field but were blocked by gates. A pileup ensued and 73 fans were injured, six critically. Luckily, no fatalities occurred. Just let the fans rush the damn field and party, which I hear they do well in Madison. Nicknamed Death Valley, as a cemetery once overlooked a field from a hill, Memorial Stadium served as the Carolina Panthers' first home in 1995. After the stadium got its nickname, an actual rock from Death Valley was sent to longtime coach Frank Howard. It was used as a doorstop until Gene Willimon placed it at the east end zone and had the players touch it as they ran past. They ended up winning that day, and the rest is history. Running down the hill has happened nearly 400 times now. If you have ever been to Lincoln, Nebraska, you would know that there isn't much to the town, except the giant stadium which dominates the city's skyline. Modeled after the Horseshoe in Ohio State, the 85K capacity house has a record 365 consecutive sellouts dating back to 1962, which is amazing considering how things have been going lately. I guess you can say it's getting frosty in Lincoln. The Palace on the Prairie, this stadium is not enclosed because it would have encroached on other facilities adjacent to it. You would think they would have found more room in the middle of Oklahoma. There is the Sooner Schooner, which takes a trip around the end zone after an OU score driven by the Roughnecks. In the 1985 Orange Bowl, after a field goal attempt, the Schooner got stuck in the wet end zone, causing an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty to be assessed on the wagon. The ensuing re-kick was blocked and OU eventually lost. A trail of tears indeed. Though it's spelled Jordan, it's pronounced Jordan. The site of a few miracles, the field is named after longtime coach and athletic director Pat Dye. The stadium's video board is 57 by 190 feet, the current largest in college football. More renovations are being completed, including the freshly installed hot seat in Gus Malzahn's office. Though Steve Spurrier's name is on the field, most people know this stadium as The Swamp, which is fitting because it is literally built on marshland and its construction presented many engineering challenges. Attached to the arena is the Heavener Football Complex, which serves as the stadium's main entrance. Its grand space provides ample room for all the Tebow worshippers, and yes, that's still a thing. Ask any Florida fan. Home of the Bruins, this stadium is shaped like an actual football. Still an annual game, the Rose Bowl also rotates into the college football playoffs so that the committee can cash in on the new format instead of blocking it like they did all those years. The annual Rose Bowl parade, which takes place on New Year's Day, kills about 75,000 roses each year. The building has hosted five Super Bowls, the last one in 1993, and that one was forgettable.
Known for its hedges around the field, Sanford Stadium in Athens has seen many changes over the years. The field has only been rushed once in 2000 when UGA beat Tennessee. The aforementioned hedges provide a stout deterrent from fans running onto the field and having anything fun to celebrate in life. Sounds familiar. Our first 100K capacity stadium on this list, DKR is the ninth largest stadium in the world. The Jumbotron has a 2064 by 848 resolution, but has been mocked as a giant billboard, jokingly called Adzilla. How else are they gonna pay back all that money they owe Charlie Strong? The Longhorns mascot is a giant steer named Bevo, and the walking side of beef has been there since 1916. There have been 15 Bevos. Hamburger. You are looking live at one of the toughest damn places to play on earth. The visiting locker room is literally named the Fail Room after Alabama alumnus and donor James Fail. Though the seating capacity was expanded in 2010, in cupcake games they have trouble filling the stands because everyone on earth knows Alabama is gonna whip teams' asses like they are on rookie mode. There's already a statue of Nick Saban outside. He probably will have at least three more built by the time he's done. Not to be outdone by the rivals to the east, Tiger Stadium has the sixth largest seating capacity in college football. At one time, student dormitories were built into the stadium. Imagine trying to study for your microbiology exam on Saturday night while a man-made earthquake is going off. The dorms are now used for storage. LSU is one of the last stadiums to feature H-style goalposts. This is so the team can run through them when entering the field. What do you think of that, Coach Orgeron? With the unique checkerboard pattern in the seating bowl, the fans' clothing, and the end zone, Nayland Stadium is the second largest stadium in the SEC. The Vols feature Smokey, a hound dog, as their mascot. There have been 10 Smokies. Every game starts with the team running through the team. Shown with older images here, Kyle Field has the largest capacity in the SEC and underwent major renovations in 2015. The old press box, which would sway during the Aggie War hymn, was removed and replaced. The Aggie Band is the largest military-style marching band in the United States. Of course, we cannot leave out the 12th man, which was trademarked by Texas A&M in 1989. The university has sued two NFL teams over its use, Seattle, which licensed the term from them, and the Colts, who had to remove the language from their ring of honor. Why can't y'all just call them fans, you unoriginal hacks? The Horseshoe. The Shoe. The third largest stadium in the country has an impressive seating bowl, but also features a rotunda at the north end of the stadium. I wonder if that's where Zach Smith sent pictures of his junk from. Oh wait, that was the White House. In all seriousness, the Ohio State Band is one of the most creative units in college football as they go all out on their routines, which includes flossing. Beaver Stadium, the second highest capacity on this list and one of the loudest in the country. The home fans started dressing in all white and 2005 called it a whiteout, but then changed the name of the process to White House as the Phoenix Coyotes said they copied the Winnipeg whiteout from them. Easy there, Yotes. Nobody wants to copy anything you have ever done. The White House is the term going forward and whitewash is what they did to Joe Paterno and his statue. And the largest college football stadium is... You probably already knew this, but the appropriately nicknamed Big House is the largest stadium in the USNA and is the second largest in the world. As of 1956, all official stadium capacities for the Big House have to end in 01, as a seat is reserved for Fritz Chrysler, the athletic director at the time. He's dead, by the way. 
And lastly, during key plays at the stadium, fans are to take their keys out and jingle them and make noise, hoping something good will happen. And on this play, they put those keys right in their goddamn ignitions and drove as far away from the big house as they possibly could. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please get in on that hot college football betting action and check out this video sponsor, MyBookie. Hit that link below and double up your first deposit up to $1,000 by using my code POINTS100. Big games are coming up this weekend. Also, check out my other stadium critiques when you get a chance. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to the end of this video.